Right, so I will, I will be quickly skipping some of them that are less important. So, uh, and the whole presentation will be, will be available online after it for those that are interested. So. Okay. I hope it's so. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Klaus Berlich and I'm currently working on a, uh, 1.6 Joomla caching improvements. Uh, most of the code is already in, but there are a few, few bugs to iron out uh, left. But the main thing is already done. Uh, but I will start with the story how I got involved in Joomla and uh, the whole caching thing. So I'll try to do, do it quickly. It's a picture of high speed. <laughs> uh, it's a quite an amazing story because it's a long, it was a lot of willpower was needed to come <laughs> to the end of it. Uh, it's about starts with a failure and I hope it co ends with a success. Uh, in two, 2007, we were approached by a client uh, to build a travel portal and this client doesn't, didn't have no clear, uh, defi clear defined business strategy and exact site scope was also unknown. So we decided to go with, in a kind of a joint venture with them uh, uh, we developed the, uh, the whole concept of the site and so on with them, but it, it was not really an easy task because we entered an unknown territory for us, the, the, the travel, that it's a really complicated one with uh, wholesalers, global distribution systems, reservation systems, uh, and, and you don't really know for the, for in the beginning what, who is selling what and who is selling to who, and it's, everything is mixed up, and you need a lot of time to, do, to classify things, and uh, because the problem was that also the client didn't know this, uh, so we, together, it took us, uh, that's how I felt for sometimes. <laughs> So it took us two years to finish this uh, task. That was before the development. And after that, development finally began. That's the basic plan with, uh, of the application with it. Uh, I will uh, go into more details later, just an overview now. And then, when we started to develop, when we were, uh, we were about to get to the beta, uh, main developer sub subcontractor left and uh, actual work that was done was about 10%. <laughs> so you can imagine I was in a big trouble. <laughs> and another problem was I knew PHP only briefly. So you can imagine. <laughs> uh, but I learned PHP and object-oriented programming and brought it to beta level in about three months. Uh, it was from dawn to from dusk to dawn uh, thing. Uh, perhaps you can compare these three months to how long it took to take Joomla to the beta level. <laughs> and result, one of the most complex besides built on Joomla. Uh, it looks simple, but it's uh, quite complex under the hood. Uh, it uh, it's looks simple, but it's simple in a Google way, you know. Google looks simple if you look at it, but under the hood there are a lot of things going on. It's combined power Joomla PHP framework and EXT JSE JavaScript framework that is used on the presentation layer uh, to do uh, Ajax and all this uh, nice stuff. Uh, this is the base, basic chart. Uh, results from own database are merged with results from multiple different on-demand XML data sources. But there was another problem. Initially, it took an average 45 to 65 seconds to display a result. That is totally unacceptable. So site badly needed a speed boost. Speed? No, not this kind of speed. <laughs> it's, that's more likely. <laughs> so we found an answer in heavy use of caching. 
I will return to this case later because I will, now I will do the, some more, some uh, more, uh, something more about the theory of the Joomla cache. So this is a story how simple solutions can speed up things 10 times or more as end results. Cache. Temporary store a unit of, of information to be reused till later. I made these definitions myself because I didn't find anything useful on uh, internet. Uh, because more, more or less all caching uh, articles uh, uh, are focused on the and on processor caching or hardware caching, uh, not so much. Uh, there is not so much literature available about web application caching. With web caching, we have multiple layers of caching. Network caching with content delivery network, server caching, select proxy servers, daemons and interpreters caching. That's an Apache mod cache or PHP opcode caching, MySQL query cache. And then you have this one we will talk about today. This is web application le level of caching, the Joomla cache. And there is another one that's customer side of the cache, that's the browser caching. And it's used by your Joomla page cache plugin uh, to cache the whole pages uh, that are served by Joomla. Uh, web application caching is basically creating temporary static copies of otherwise dynamic pages. So you get temporary freezes the state of the, the thing and then refreshes it after uh, manually or after some predefined uh, unit of time. Uh, what, this is the situation of typical website. We have, this, we have a, a limited number of contents that are displayed over and over again to multiple users. And, no, if, and if thousand users come to the site, we, did, we don't have no cache. Everything has to be generated for every and each of them. But with cache, we store some, all, some uh, or all of the information and serve it to the new, next user that requests the same page or particular piece of information. So there is not only view, view cache that caches the whole view, but all, there are also smaller ca uh, cache units. Now, this is Joomla caching topology. This chart shows uh, the middle one is a little bit hard to see because it's a blue, light blue. Uh, we have page cache that covers the whole thing, that covers smaller units, functions, models, components, templates. It basically co makes a copy of the whole page that is displayed to the user. There is component cache. Visible, it's here. Uh, that this one displays uh, caches uh, output of the component. That is another one uh, th that's very similar. That's model cache, and there are there is another group. This, these are smaller. One is functional or ca callback cache and uh, output cache or and row cache. These are two different things, but they are grouped in this, uh, because uh, this they cache smaller units of information. I will explain each type in the following slides. Uh, page cache takes snapshots and entire pages. Uh, it's the widest and least flexible approach of all caching options. It's the fastest, but it's uh, totally unflexible. Uh, then you have model and component view cache. Uh, uh, they are a group as they both create static copy for com of complete output of component or a model. Uh, in Joomla 1.5, records uh, are based on the colleague URL. Uh, in 1.6, this was completely changed. So I will explain the changes later so, so we, we can move on. Uh, important difference between model and component view cache. Model caching can be only set on or off for all instances. That's true for Joomla 1.5 and is, was also ch changed in 1.6. This type of cache is most widespread cache type. It's used in almost every core component now, but before I think 1.15, uh, it was only used in com content, uh, but it's also o o often found in third-party components. 
Uh, it per performs very well in the speed terms, but it effectively disables any user extension to framework uh, interaction. So uh, this, uh, this interaction is freezed until cached copies expire. So this, is not, this type of cache is not suitable for any components or models that react or do something uh, uh, based on the user input. Uh, or for instance, you can't uh, cache a component that displays time. Uh, current time because time changes and <laughs> it won't be valid uh, next. Uh, side effect of this is that cached copy uh, includes only models or components own output. Any external file that is called by using methods like document at style sheet won't get included. That sounds weird but that's how it is because uh, the uh, component model calls this method and this method includes that file. And because the model's, uh, model's output is cached, uh, th this uh, call is not uh, done uh, at that point. This is something that was also uh, changed uh, in 1.6 because uh, there are some workarounds available for this and uh, they are now in 1.6 available for all kinds of cache, not just, they were pre previously they were available only for view cache or page cache. Uh, there's one catch 22 connected to this because if you add multiple workarounds, you lose time uh, and uh, uh, to get everything working, you would have to uh, put more workarounds around the things and uh, time, uh, it will would prefer, uh, perform uh, worse. So basic meaning of the cache that's speeding up things would lose it. There, these two uh, types, uh, this and the next one, are most um, recommendable types of cache to use. This function callback cache. Uh, this is the first of flexible caching times that's, that enable us to differentiate between various parts of the extension, not the whole output, but you cache only parts of it. This particular one caches output of function calls. Records are based on the arguments passed to the function automatically. It's calculated. Uh, it's, so it's not uh, something like your URL or something, but you pass to the fu function an argument and you know, it's calculated for those arguments. It's very easy to use, but I don't know why m uh, not many developers use it. Uh, I know it's K2, it uses it as we discussed it, but uh, I, I've looked in a few components and really didn't find uh, no use of it in ma a lot of them. Um, I'm sorry for my language, my English is not my <laughs> mother tongue. Uh, there is output cache. This caches output of some part of the script. Records of, are based on the ID manually passed to it. Uh, it's basically output buffering with caching. Uh, so the, uh, this is the least used type of cache in Joomla. And there is also raw, also raw cache that was in 1.5 possible only uh, to call output cache and use get and store methods that are not available in output cache. Uh, in 1.6, you can do uh, pass uh, uh, to J factory uh, get cache uh, empty, uh, you know, uh, empty. You just pass an empty string to it and it uses raw cache then in that case. Uh, it's this type of cache is fully con controlled by the coder, what to store, when to store, how to classify units. It's highly useful when we, when we are dealing with finite number of reusable data units. Examples, high number of possible combinations. We have a large, pool, a large number of, uh, uh, that search engine is typical uh, kind of this kind. You, uh, for instance, products in online store. You have 100 products, you cache each product separately, but you don't cache the, uh, cache the search results because each search result is different because people enter different parameters to search. Uh, uh, and in, in, this, by this, in this way, you can get very fast these results back because you don't have to end, render 
uh, thumbnail or a search for description and do queries for each product. You just pull uh, products out of the cache one by one, but it's, it's uh, much faster than when you have to generate everything from the beginning to the end. Uh, other examples, examples ex expensive queries, remote XML, thumbnails, reusable text, or any reusable data set. Also, this kind of cache is also usable to pass large amounts of data between different parts of applications or of, uh, different scripts, or even uh, when you have multiple level search engine, that's an example. Yeah, we, we had this case because we, have, we pulled uh, data that, uh, we, that uh, had more data in it than we needed at the first stage, but the same data, data was needed in the second level when we, uh, this is two level uh, search engine with uh, short results on the first level and detailed results when you click on the, uh, on the second level, but there's no point to do search twice. You just pass this information from one level to the second one. You can do this via URL, but the, that's the, then the URL becomes one kilometer long, so uh, and even passes the limit. Uh, so uh, basically, you just use ID. You just pass ID in your URL, and the next level just pulls the data from the cache. Yeah, then we are the, at the case study. That's the case we I spoke at the beginning. As you can remember. 45 to 65 seconds to display a search result. This is diagnosis. Larger portion of, uh, portion of time was spent on remote XML requests waiting for and receiving replies. Uh, XML, remote XML is a really slow thing. Uh, and uh, it, is really, it is really slower even in this case because by sending a request, you're actually firing uh, a search on the other side, and you have to wait that they produce the result and they, you get the XML uh, back. Other two performance hogs were resizing images and internal database queries. Uh, there's one, one good thing we found that second and other pages of paginated results displayed instantly because they were, uh, they were done by a JavaScript, not by PHP. And that is this, that chart again. Uh, the, uh, this primary uh, XML feed that's traffic Tibet XML, some, if there are, there are some developers for Germany present, they might recognize it, uh, is a, a little bit poorly done. It's, it, rec it gives back only IDs of the hotels. If you have a travel package, you get the ID of the hotel, and then you have to pull picture and description from second or third source. So you can imagine when you get 300 results, you have to do 300 searches uh, for pictures and uh, 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 descriptions, and then uh, you have also to render those pictures and so on. And it took, that's why it took 65 seconds, or even sometimes even even time out. It, because it passed the 90 second limit that was imposed. Solution. We did caching on multiple levels. Cache pages that were fully rendered because we chose to render uh, images and descriptions only for the view pages that were actually viewed. That is, if you have 300 results and you have pa pages of 10 results, uh, and the user only views first or second one, uh, it doesn't render uh, all results from the beginning, but it, it pulls the first source, that is that traffic, traffic XML, and then renders pictures and, uh, pictures and descriptions only uh, when they are actually viewed by 10. Uh, the second one was cache XML queries. That's because uh, we, that way we also can pass data from short results to detailed pages. And there is long-term caching that's a, that has lifetime something like six months uh, of images and descriptions because th this part really brought improvement in the performance. So that's, it's logical, but uh, until you think, think about it, uh, some, if you do this for the first time, uh, it, you have to think about it and find it out. <laughs> um, 
also we did uh, add more indexes to MySQL tables and uh, query and render images and description per page. That's something I mentioned before. Uh, result, so site now runs 10 times faster. Average first page loads on fa five to six seconds of that first page of the results because that one includes also query to the uh, primary source and sub pages that's pa paginated uh, pages load in one uh, 0.5 or to one second. Uh, those timings also further drop dramatically 50% uh, or more on peak hours. That sounds illogical, but it's how it works. The bigger the number of users on the site, the faster it goes. It, of course, it's limited by the hosting uh, capabilities and Apache and so on, uh, but uh, in some degree it works that way because uh, uh, every user just, it just creates a small amount of cache. Uh, when, the, uh, when you come to the site uh, somewhere in the middle of the night, when there are not, not a lot of users on the site, uh, every user uh, creates a new cache, and that's why it's slow. Some layers of cache work that way. Some layers of cache uh, images or descriptions are stored for longer time, so this, uh, this, it's not, it doesn't get so bad at, this, at the beginning. Uh, and this, the final part, Joomla 1.6 cache changes. A very long story made short, it finally works, I hope. <laughs> With this amount of changes, uh, there, I'm sure there will be some bugs found, uh, but I hope it's, I made uh, a little less messy thing than it was before because half of the things were missing or didn't work. Uh, Framework level, every, almost everything was redone. A cache, cache library has been completely refactored. Uh, most important framework changes. Uh, that's not a change, that's a, just a rename, but it's an important one because uh, it reflects the, uh, the role of the uh, handlers. Uh, cache handlers are now known as cache controllers because you have two levels of li uh, cache library. That's one is controllers and second one is a lower level that does the actual storage and the get and store operations. There, was, there is also a Jcache controller parent class that um, among other things, it controls row, get and store calls. There is no, no Jcache controller row, but uh, the parent does this uh, when needed. There are new cache light and win cache storage handlers. Uh, this win cache is the famous contribution from Microsoft, but it was uh, after the contribution was done, it was 70% of the code was rewritten because it had the, the same problems like the other uh, drivers in 1.5. This is missing garbage collect or clean methods and so on. Uh, file cache handler was heavily optimized all other f handlers should be fixed and missing fun functions added, code cleaned and tested and should be now working properly. And that if everybody interested, I'm asking you to test this, perhaps even, <laughs> even on a live installation. <laughs> Another thing, semaphore locking was added for reliability and improved performance because now, before you had only low level of locking, that's file locking or uh, uh, main cache performed locking. Uh, it, this one gives uh, speed boosts uh, in cases where two simultaneous requests request a cache uh, file that is already generated but by one of those two simultaneous requests. So uh, in previous cases, you would get two generators, two users would generate the same thing. Now think get the first one locks it and the second one knows it has to wait that the first one generates it and then reads it. Uh, change component view caching and also model cache was completely recomposed conceptualized. 
uh, view caching uh, component in components was uh, key change because it had to be uh, unsafe cache ID creation method that was created for the whole URL uh, has had to be replaced with a safer method because this one the whole URL uh, opens the door for DOS attacks. You just add end uh, and random is random and you, you fill someone's cache storage. Very easy to do. Especially if someone is using memory based storage that happens even faster in that case. CMS framework level changes cache it implemented in all components and models. That's something that was really not done in 1.5. Uh, caching added to some most expensive and frequent framework calls, like you have them, them listed under them. Uh, user level functional changes, cache administration, like clean cache or purge cache, now works with all storage cache uh, handlers. This was previously in 1.5, it was hard coded and only file cache operations worked. Uh, there was not possible to clean APC, uh, uh, when you had to be APC driver, you, you couldn't clean the cache manually. Uh, there is one standalone garbage collect script added, uh, so uh, you have to have access to cron tap local or remote one. Uh, the script is in libraries, Joomla, utilities, garbage cron, and this, this, this script ru runs garbage collect on demand, uh, so it cleans up uh, those uh, storage units that uh, have their time limits passed. AP changes that are changes important for third party developers. That's cache ID from the wheel cache, a replacement for previous answer way. That's how you do it. That's com content control case. Uh, you just list parameters that are, that are important for your component with their types so that uh, somebody can uh, do, uh, do nasty things. Uh, uh, so you just, and you pass it to the parent display method. Uh, really simple change, but it, uh, it's effective. Uh, and this is Dennis model cache. This one was completely redone. You had before there was only one mode of per operation, there are now there are five. Three of them are to be set from model XML file, while two are meant to be used for, from within the model. That was previously possible only in components uh, via, via uh, controllers. Now it's mo also possible to do it in the model uh, from the, the main model uh, PHP file. Uh, default, it defaults to backwards to, to backwards compatible old static mode that requires no changes to a model. So it's everything is. I try to make sure that everything works uh, and, and is uh, backwards compatible. Uh, modes to be set in XML, that's static, that's really static, that's one file for all, for all pages with the same model parameters. So you don't, be, uh, all static was a little bit different. You had one cache file for all pages with the same model ID and user ID. That's how it was one. I don't know why, but it was. Uh, and there is a third mode, item ID mode, that is really useful, most useful one. Uh, this, for for instance, for uh, main menu or uh, things, models that models are more or less based on the item IDs that change on the item IDs, or they stay in the, on the same on the old pages. Uh, so this this item ID mode is most useful, and. Uh, how to use it in addition to cache field that was required in 1.5 there is a new hidden field called cache mode that sets any of the both modes so you just add this line to the xml file and you get the required cache mode i hope it's visible 
And the last one mode to be called from inside the model that is safe URI uh, mode. It's, its ID is created from URL parameters the same way as in component view cache. And the last one, ID mode, model where model sets its own cache IDs. It says, uh, uh, if anyone is interested, we can, interestedly, we can go later and look at the code. So uh, to, if anyone is interested in, the, in details. But, uh, to use these modes, you change cache field in XML file to own cache field. So the, the framework knows that you're, you're doing your own cache from the, inside the model and call it gmodel helper model cache from within the model itself. That's an example. Uh, when you pr replaced, for example, mode related items with helper, get list method with cached uh, methods. That's uh, really, this, this mode is really, really a wrapper to the, to the function uh, cache, uh, but to save some code, uh, I made this, uh, wrapper, uh, it's easier to use. You don't have to d redo, redo the, the wheel, in, reinvent the wheel uh, for every model you do. And the last one changes to row cache. Row cache and get and store are easily accessed by passing empty string as cache control to jfactory get cache. Data is auto serialized, deserialized, that was not in a case in 1.5 and also locking and unlocking are performed automatically because normally locking and unlocking are done by controllers, not the low level uh, cache handlers. And here the story ends. Okay, a little more. <laughs> I hope you liked where it ended, if you st still remember where I started at the beginning. Thank you. And now if somebody has any questions. Um. In uh, one point five, when uh, the module helps to discuss if uh, the developer is accepting C to switch JavaScript, even the Zoom API, yeah. the case of the project, right? Yeah. Uh, obviously when when you turn on caching for the module, this cannot be applied. Yeah, that's uh, something I, <laughs> I spoke about before you came in. <laughs> it's changed in 1.6 because uh, all workarounds that are performed on various cache ta caching types are now centralized in one function. And this function is optional uh, to, to be called on, performed on any type of mo uh, So uh, by default, it's, it is performed on model cache. So you have this workaround that uh, when uh, this call is found in cache, uh, the actual call is run from the framework. Uh, so it should work in 1.6. Uh, this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the output goes, it's, it's stored in cache in like an array and the head is cached separately and the, the rest is cached, cached, the output is cached separately and, and if a framework finds that is a call to, it, it, this a framework uh, workaround was present in just in page cache b before, I think now I just centralized all this uh, workarounds found in ver various cache handlers at one place and they get performed on every type of cache except uh, except there was one bug so we changed it uh, with uh, one bug with uh, JPAT uh, because uh, in models you have to throw that out because it, uh, it caused that uh, models rewrote JPAT uh, from the components, so uh, the wrong J, uh, the, the wrong pathway appeared. So uh, we made that when we are doing a functional uh, caching, the, this particular uh, this particular workaround is not performed. Uh, so we might find another case when we have to disable one of the workarounds, but they are now all at the same place, so it's, it's easy to turn them on or off. It's just a few lines of code uh, before. It, the, it was the case in 1.15, 16, I think, uh, 
the, when one work, such workaround was added and there is currently I think on Joomla.org uh, when you uh, try to make a comment it sometimes just says if there is wrong security token I think it's coming from this because uh, because view cache in 1.5 doesn't have this workaround performed. Uh, only page cache has this security token per, uh, workaround. Uh, you can. Sorry, You can do that by uh, using that raw cache type. Uh, you just store any type of information inside the cache. Uh, so it doesn't matter what, what what's inside. Well, okay. Okay. Yeah. You just you ju you would just probably have to convert uh, uh, the or add some headers or something like that, that so that the, it, it would be recognized as a picture. Uh, so it could be a, an additional parameter. Yeah. Right? Could be. A, Yeah, okay. that, that could be done, yeah. That's a good idea. Could you say it for 1.6? No. <laughs> for 1.6, I'm, I'm afraid not, because the, the features are uh, locked. Uh, it's feature frozen, so it's only bugs now. But uh, as I understood, 1.7 is coming out in about six months, so uh, they are doing now time-based releases, not, uh, not feature-based releases, so it should really come in six months, so it would be possible for 1.7. Anything else? If not, then thank you for listening to me. I hope <laughs> I didn't sound too Russian <laughs> with my English. <laughs> and if anyone... Uh,